All right, good morning. Today is Saturday, November 14th. Today's reading will be 1 Corinthians chapters 4 through 6. Chapter 4 is kind of a powerful chapter here. Uh, Paul talks about his qualifications, talks about how, imagine what he would say to the modern church. You know, we judge so much based on appearance, nice things, buildings. Of course, I'm, always, I'm a fan of one. And Paul would not have been considered successful in modern Christianity. Didn't have a place to live. Didn't have, I mean, you see, you, you see this chapter um, condemning, you know, I think modern Christianity a little bit. All right, chapter five then talks about this guy who was with his father's wife. Even Paul's like, man, we don't even have a name for this. Look here, wants him expelled out of the church. Now we find the purpose of that is for the salvation of his life. Um, you know, it doesn't say that his salvation is lost uh, for his soul, but you know, for the correction here. You know, and you see this when it's talking about judging, and you, you, you see here, we're supposed to judge. We're supposed to take a stand. We're supposed to have a line. And see there in verse 11, there's a group of people that we're not supposed to eat with. But, you know, hey, we think it's nothing. Just go ahead and do whatever. Now, chapter 6 talks about lawsuits between believers. Now, that's something Paul says that should not happen. I mean, obviously, when he says that, I agree. Um, I think there's certain instances, like, say, for instance, insurance is involved or something like that. But to use, I mean, for two people in a church, I mean, it'd be best not to go into business together. It rarely goes well. Uh, sometimes it does. But for us to sue each other. Um, matter of fact, in our church constitution, when you join, you agree to binding arbitration should something go haywire. But, you know, if we have two people in church and there's a loss involved, we're supposed to go before the church, present our case there. Or we could go before the court system, you know, in violation of scripture, and then people on the outside, I, I think, you know, Christians can't even figure out this stuff. There are several steps to church discipline, and I think it, and sometimes it is used too often for just cranky people or people we don't like. But the answer to almost everything is found there in verse 7. Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? You know, sometimes wrong things happen to us, and you know what? It's just life. I'm not saying that's always supposed to be the case, but, you know, sometimes that is the case. There's steps when somebody wrongs you in a church. Um, the first is to go to that person. The, and if that is, doesn't solve it, I'm supposed to go, you know, find an elder, find somebody else, and go back to the, you know, to the testimony of two or three witnesses that's established. If that doesn't work, then I'm supposed to take it before the church. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, there's, you know, the booting. But... You know, here, the whole thing can be stopped. You d just because somebody doesn't agree with you doesn't mean you have to go to the next step. And here, you know, it says, why not? Why don't you rather be, be defrauded? That doesn't talk about sweeping sin under the rug, obviously. All right, chapter, s the second half of chapter 6 here then goes into sexual immorality, which then ties into chapter 7. We could have made that today, but you know what? I want to spend a lot of time on chapter 7. See, notice it says all things are lawful on me. It doesn't, you know, sin, of course not. But then fornication is, is its own classification. So, you know, like it says there, I have complete freedom. Uh, but there's just certain places that you sh we shouldn't go. There's certain things we should not do. The Bible's clear. And fornication's at the top of that list. All right. Hope you have a great day. We'll catch you tomorrow.